we have two more properties to look at in this section. Um, the first one is the inverse property. And we spoke a little bit about the additive inverse earlier in the semester when we were looking at um, adding and subtracting negative numbers. The additive inverse is the number we add to equal zero. Okay. So um, when we were looking at integer operations, we referred to this as the opposite of a number. Okay. The multiplicative inverse inverse is the number we multiply to equal 1. And it is always reciprocal, the reciprocal, that number is always the reciprocal of the original number. So let's look at some examples to make some sense of that. So if I want to figure out what do I add to negative 6 in order to get 0 as my answer, it's going to be the number that is the opposite of negative 6. That negative 6 plus a positive 6 would give me 0. So the additive inverse of negative 6 is a positive 6. For multiplicative inverse, I'm asking myself, what do I need to multiply negative 14 by in order to get 1? So the reciprocal of a negative 14, first I'm going to make negative 14 into a fraction so that I can find its reciprocal. The reciprocal of negative 14 once is going to be a negative 1 14th. Because if you look here, negative 14 once times negative 1 14th. The 14's will cancel out. The 1's will cancel out. The negatives will cancel out. And we'll end up with 1 equaling 1. Our final property to look at for this section is the distributive property. Um, and I want you to think of the distributive property just like you would think of distribution anywhere else. Um, a distributor, a Pepsi distributor, is the person that drives the Pepsi truck around to all of the Circle K's or King Supers or 7-Elevens and distributes shipments of soda. So they take their goods and they give them to all of the different stores on their route. Um, so a distributive property says, um, I'm going to give it to you in the abstract because it's hard to, to say it in words. Um, distributes multiplication over grouped addition or subtraction. You can also think of it as a detour for order of operations. Okay, and let me explain why that is. Um, that in this problem, I could follow order of operations. I could do 4 minus 3 and get 1 and then take that 1 and multiply it by 2 to get a final answer of 2. What the distributive property tells me is that another way to get to that same answer is to take this 2 and distribute it to the 4 and the negative 3. So this 2 times a 4 would become 8 and the 2 times 3 would become 6 
and 8 minus 6 is also 2. The reason that we might want this workaround, now if they give us all the values, we would just follow PEMDAS. But as we start to move into algebra, you're going to have places where one of these numbers might be a variable. So you can't do what's inside the parentheses because you don't know what the value of one of those numbers is. So this distributive property gives us a detour to be able to still move forward with the math when we're unable to do the parentheses before the multiplication. So this is the distributive property on this side. This is traditional order of operations, otherwise known as PEMDAS, on the left side. Um, this was one where there's an X on the inside. And I chose this problem as our example because it looks like there's nothing to distribute on the outside. Um, but I wanted to get at the idea that any time you see a negative sign outside of a grouping symbol, it means that that negative is really a negative 1 that needs to get distributed or multiplied by all of the terms on the inside. So a negative x plus 5 minus 7 is the same thing as negative x minus 5 plus 7 because this negative makes that x into a negative x, this negative makes that positive 5 negative, and when we multiply a negative times a negative, it turns back into a positive 7. You might also be asked to distribute a 3 over each of those terms, so we'll add an extra example here to show that. So if they said distribute 3 over x plus 5 minus 7, I could consolidate the 5 minus 7 here and get an x minus 2, but I can't continue to do the work inside my parentheses because I don't know how much x is worth. So to be able to take this problem one more step of simplification, I'd use the distributive property, and it would become 3x minus 6.